we're to step six of the eightfold path. How does one confront the trade-offs? So now I got this matrix, or I've got some break-even analysis. Um, how do I confront the trade-offs? How do I think about the step of I've got all these possibilities and I've got to somehow make trade-offs between equity and efficiency, and then maybe trade-offs between alternatives because I maybe could do mixtures of them. So there's a lot of trade-offs to confront now. How do I do that? The key idea here goes back to what we were saying before about compared to what. Mm -hmm. In order to confront trade-offs, you know, a little bit more of a little bit more efficiency gets you a little less equity, too bad, or more equity gets you less efficiency. You know, that's the situation. What do I choose? Okay, but before you can actually make that choice and really evaluate the trade-off, you've got to have some base case against which everything is compared in a standard way. So choosing a base case is uh, an important step. You want to you want to have a, a helpful one. There are a lot of ways to choose different base cases. The, the the one I sort of drift towards and maybe is most helpful is if you project uh, trends to continue in the present way, that would be the base case. So let's compare all alternatives against what we would get if we just did nothing except let present trends go. Okay, so that that's a, a useful thing. Well, and that's very important because sometimes if you actually think about what's going to happen in the future, you may come to the conclusion that things are really getting bad. So it's more important than you even imagined that's to true. do something different. Or you might start looking and saying, "Gosh, there's evidence that things are getting better here, and it's possible that if we just let things go, they might just solve the problem that way." Yeah, and you, you can throw into the mix some uh, well-known engines of change that are predictably going to happen. Political turnover, if the politics change, will this throw out, or make, make better the status quo that we see today, or will it make it worse? Uh, you know, budgeting is sort of, uh, well, I should say fiscal situations are cyclical. Could get better, you know, today we're rich. If we start this now, when we get poor, what's going to happen? So there's these... And there's technological change. Technological I mean, sometimes fixes. technological fixes for problems are very good ones. And well, if on the horizon you can see something coming along, exactly. you might say, well, this isn't the time to move on this right now because five years from now we'll have a technology that will revolutionize how we can deal with the problem. Yeah. Demographic change, which is more... Demographic change is another... Thing to, which could make the problem worse or could make the problem better. Depending yeah, it upon isn't what always time. about numbers only, but also about the composition of different groups within the society. Right. Um, okay, so confronting the trade offs inevitably has a value dimension too. So, although you can do it when and sitting at your desk, okay, ultimately that's probably beyond your job description. The client or the Congress or whatever, the, the politically legitimate people are going to confront those trade-offs. What you have to do is make them clear and crisp. And the way to really try to do that is uh, all trade-offs, all decisions of any use are made at the margin. If we have a little bit more of this, we get a little bit more of that or we give up a little more of that. you know, uh, and looking at the alternatives in terms of their incremental differences is sort of the key. It's, it's the way to go, you know. So I think that's the end of confronting the trade-offs, and we're now going to go to the next step.